Hi everyone, our journal page today, but before I begin, last video I mentioned how some people uh, left me comments about my English, some of you got really upset on my behalf, please don't, it's not, that <laughs> don't give them power, there is nothing to get angry about, I don't, I, the rude ones I just delete, the other ones that are trying to be helpful I just say thank you and that's it me mentioning it in the last video was just my uh, gentle way of merging these people to move on so <laughs> this is it and some of this even funny so and really Thank you for all your kind comments. It really means a lot. And Robin, you cracked me up. I'm going to really refer these people to the Three Stooges uh, videos. <laughs> it was a great idea. So I'm adopting the, uh, this idea. Now I'm going to start. I'm going to use this uh, paper napkin. Use whatever uh, papers you uh, you have or napkins I'm going to use this one and I'm going to uh, take the back uh, layers out and now I'm going to take part of this napkin the best way uh, is I think it's the best way because it gives a torn edges and then your napkin just meld, <laughs> blend <laughs> into the other stuff on your page. I'm taking a, a brush with water that I've sprayed here and I'm just going like this and let's see maybe I will take a little bit more. I hope there is enough if not i will just put some more it's very very hot here and uh, we are reaching now a uh, 40 and something celsius don't know how it translates to fahrenheit but it's so hot so damn hot and i can hear robin williams in my head saying it's so damn hot so everything is just dry instantly at least that's how it seems so as you can see I've got jagged edges and this piece is going to go here now all kinds of ways to go about your page and that I wanted to talk to you about like if I'm putting this here the simplest and easiest way to construct a page is to take the other piece of this paper napkin and mirror this uh, part and you uh, you have instant a uh, page layout and frame to your page another way to go about it is to mirror again this section here but with other elements like I can pick some a uh, stencil with flowers and I can stencil I can use some paste and a uh, texture and all I uh, other kinds of details that will uh, correspond with this piece now the other way is not mirror and not echo this piece is to go against it or really not against it uh, more making a contrast and that's what I'm aiming for this time so in contrast what I'm going to do I'm going to take this kind of stencil that I have letters on let's see yes uh, letters and for me the they do correspond with this, uh, some letters that I have on the napkin here and I'm going to make texture uh, here in this area 
for a mo I'm hoping uh, for a more grungy distressed look it will begin by putting some paste and I'm using joint compound wall compound or wood filler I'm not using modeling paste it just a and I don't need it it's uh, too expensive and a joint compound is just uh, as good so first I'm going to glue this and I'm going to use white glue that I've added some water to it's just easier on napkins and I don't have measurements because it just depends on the consistency of the white glue even when I buy the same white glue uh, from the same cheap store the consistency is different so I'm just making sure I have glue all over if you miss a spot and then you put your paper napkin and and then go over it because you want to seal it in place then you will have an air bubble so it can be fixed but I'm just making sure I have glue all over and that's it I don't care about wrinkles wrinkles are great they are adding to the texture here we go now glue on top use the flat of the brush and slide it don't drag it's when you're doing the up the upside it's better to have lots of glue on your brush so it will glide and move from the inside towards the outside if you have air bubbles then it should uh, take care of it yeah so this is in place when it will be a uh, dry I will just uh, trim the edges because I left a little bit out of the page just to make sure it's covered so that's it in terms of the paper napkin let's close the glue now joint compound why am I using the joint compound because I buy this bucket from the hardware store and it this cost like a uh, two a modeling paste in two jars small jars like this so just prefer to use this and I always take a little bit of it and just put in this kind of container so it would be easier to work with and just putting a little bit in this container until it's finished and then I go back for more so just easier to buy this bucket easier cheaper here we go and now just closing it tightly and that's it so now for my stencil and I'm thinking yeah just random randomly on the page for texture and interest and maybe I should protect my spiral here so I'm going to take some masking tape here it is I'm putting it on my blouse just so the adhesive won't be too strong so when I peel it it won't come off with part of the page another cheap <laughs> solution because painters tape is just again 
it's from the uh, if it's from the art store it's expensive it's from if it's from the hardware store it's cheap so <laughs> okay so stencil in place and let's see just oops moved never mind quite random I'm going to scrape it off here most of it and I still want a little bit more going down here but I don't want to drag too much of the paste and let's see, let's put it like this don't want to ruin what I've got so I'm trying to hold it in place without ruining what I've already done <laughs> of course I could wait for this to dry but no patience yeah maybe a little bit will go on top yeah I'm going over a little bit of the paper napkin here yeah I think this is it in terms of adding texture to my page yeah so again removing excess from my stencil of course I'm going to wash it uh, right now never uh, leave any kind of paste doesn't matter if the, it's the modeling paste or uh, the joint compound or the wood filler whatever you are using never uh, leave it on your stencil it ruin, ruins it here we go so this needs to dry before I'm doing anything this needs to be clean I'll be back I'm back so I think this is a quite a dry I want now to add paint and I want to continue with this color I have in the background of my paper napkin I've took a, let's see I've got here a soft suede flesh and oatmeal deco art and I'm going to play with these colors and to create some continuance to the color I have here it doesn't have to be the exact color just something that will go with it and be the base for the rest so let's see uh, I want a soft brush and let's see just going in okay so these two make almost the exact color I'm uh, taking excess paint from my uh, brush because here I want it softer and that's how you do it when you want a softer blending of uh, two completely <laughs> different elements best explanation I can give you you uh, a lot of time you do it with gesso you smear it uh, with your finger and you kind of blend 
things. Okay, so this works. And I'm not trying for consistency. It's nice that I have variation and now I'm dipping into the darker color and thinking I will keep the darker color to the edges and we'll see what happens and if I don't like it I just come in and add from the lighter color so this is again quite random as you can see I'm all I'm dipping uh, each time in another color just so I will have interest and variation I can probably now use a bigger brush just to speed things along but I like that I have control right now of where everything goes so but do what you like and I'm also able now to go into all this texture and push the paint in I'm work I if I haven't said it I'm working in my one of my journals this is a sketchbook and someone uh, asked asked me about working with a sketchbook and if I have tips and what I said is that if you are planning on blending um, colors like I'm doing now it's better if you have gesso on your page because then the paint won't uh, seep into the paper right away and if I had gesso on my page uh, it would have probably went better because I could take my time blending but I didn't put gesso and but still as you can see I can work it I'm just doing a uh, small uh, areas and each time and another thing about sketchbooks uh, is that a lot of time they they are prefer <laughs> How do I say? <laughs> I don't know if I can <laughs> uh, pronounce it. Perforated that you have that you can tear uh, the page out. Not all of them, but some of them. So if you have this kind of sketchbook, just put some masking tape or anything that can, even a washi tape, just to protect your page because if you are using uh, something wet all kinds of sprays and any kind of acrylic paint then your page is at risk of tearing up so this is it I'm going to continue doing this and I'll be back once I've finished I am back and finished covering the background now I want to do some some stamping to add a um, visual texture <laughs> and continue uh, this uh, theme and I'm going to use this handwritten uh, stamp again this is going to be random on the page and most of it is going to get covered yay <laughs> because that's the whole thing about layering yeah and just maybe a little bit here here and we'll see what comes out of it and I want another element that will 
add to the grungy look I'm looking and I've got this stamp set and let's see I think I'm gonna use this stamp and let's find yeah create block and it of course it's a uh, quite a uh, hard to stamp on your texture but it doesn't have to be a uh, perfect yeah Yes, I really, really <laughs> like it. <laughs> okay, just a little bit here, and that's it. Do I want something else? No, I think I've done enough. Now, uh, I'm using, I've used archival ink, this is permanent ink, and I just need to make sure uh, it stays permanent, it's better to wait a few minutes or give it a heat blast from your heat tool to make sure it stays, because now I'm going to work on my page with a lot of paint and water, so to something that I hope will pick up all the details from the texture so I'm going to go again give it this a blast <laughs> a heat blast and I'll be back I'm back so now I want to pick all this texture and I've got here two acrylic paints, I've got Christmas Red uh, from DecoArt, I've got Burgundy Wine from Crimson and I'm going to use acrylics because that's uh, mostly what everyone has. You can use any water reactive uh, thing you have if it's a, a colored pencils, watercolors, gelatos, whatever you have but I want any kind of sprays I wanted to use this so <laughs> to play a uh, because I hope everyone has it now I'm going to add water to this let's put a little bit of this bit. oops probably the heat just sprayed on me Okay. Quite a mess. But we are not wasting paint. So. Yeah. I've got a bloodbath here. <laughs> oh my god. It went everywhere. <laughs> Okay, so water and let's start with the Christmas red. I figured it was the closer in color to my poppies, but I'm quite concerned that it's just, I don't know how to call it, too red. <laughs> so that's why I've picked the burgundy to add a little bit and we'll see what's going on and I need more water it's better to start a very lightly and add as you go just putting it here I can even spray directly like so 
when you put it on your page and you spray directly it eliminates the harsh uh, lines and now I can also move my page and get a really really nice drippage so as you can see the only problem with the acrylics uh, the more water you put um, less pigment you have it's breaking the pigment and that's why you have to be patient if you are using acrylics with water you need to be patient and add as much as you want as you go until you are satisfied with the result and I'm making a mess here let's move it and let's see spraying letting it drip now let's see I've got here this is a spray I make they are made from gel food coloring and water and it's supposed to be more intense so I'm going to try to add this to the mix so we won't be here all day waiting on the acrylics <laughs> I'm loving it how it picks all the texture and you can always help it along if you want to, it to go anywhere it's like with watercolors if you want it to go somewhere you need to make a, a road of water to, for it The water goes where uh, the water are. Made a path of water and now it will just slide there. And I can also take the brush and help it along like so. And I can already see that I will need to add a lot more uh, of the spray or the acrylics but that's okay I'm adding more red and it's very bright but when it dries it becomes just a little bit muted so I'm not concerned and I'm still not finished I want to put some black on it to make it more dramatic so I'm going to let this uh, dry completely before I move to some black and I'll be back I'm back and I don't like the result because it seeped into the page and it's not as vibrant as I want so I'm going to try and fix it. I've got the same colors here, the acrylic paints, and I've got the baby white, and I'm hoping that I will manage to cover, <laughs> to cover without covering, <laughs> uh, to make it uh, still tran uh, translucent, that I'm adding paint but you can still see what's going on so I'm moving uh, lightly I'm because I'm a little bit worried that all this water I had here will damage my texture so just going in lightly And 
and trying to get into all the crevices of the texture and I'm still hoping to go and put some black to pick all this texture and bring it to another level of uh, grungy which was what I have planned so I've got a lot of work here again <laughs> going in here where I put more texture on top of the paper napkin and now I'm easing a little bit in just so it won't be harsh yeah now I'm hoping that the black uh, will do the trick and it won't be so red <laughs> so I'm just uh, folding again my uh, baby wipe maybe it's better if, it, if I wait for it to dry but I don't know trying to be gentle about it well it's good uh, in terms of framing my page but I think I will need to be brave diluted with water and again go all over and let it drip So I'm just using it right now to frame my page, again grungy looking, not looking for perfect. Taking shape. Another brush. More water. <laughs> Let's hope now it works. And I put very little water now. Not little. Small amount. Yeah. That's what I was aiming for, so just adding a little bit more and let's flip it so it would be easier for me and water and yay! That's what I wanted. <laughs> I really like it. And I don't want it to go over here, so I'm just dabbing and stopping it where I want to. And I think I'll just add a little bit here. Again water and just some here because I wanted to pick the texture 
my whole priming frame and that you can see <laughs> what the heck I'm doing. Yeah. Just a little bit more. Oh yeah. Stopping where I want it. Basically, this is it. That's what I planned for my page. And just going to add a little bit. Here. I thought about putting some word here. Not sure. I'm going to let this dry and we'll see. I'll be back. I'm back. So dry and I added more uh, spray here and a little bit here and now I just want a what a, I wanted a, the words here I've got this stamp from Stamperia and what I've done is stamp it on the backing of the same paper napkin and now I'm just going to glue this down here and call it done this is my page so really thank you for watching and thank you for being so supportive and following <laughs> and leaving me comments it's great should have picked a larger a wider brush but never mind just making sure i have enough glue and let's see where i'm placing it I think here and being very very <laughs> gentle about it and I haven't put enough glue now I'm working from the inside towards the outside again same technique just using the flat of the brush with enough glue As you can see, although it's wet, it, if it glue, if there is enough glue and it covers everything, then the paper napkin is just disappearing into the background, which is great because I couldn't stamp this stamp on all the texture I have underneath. If you still see white places, that means that you need to go over more with the brush and the glue. And here we go. It disappeared. Now when it's dry, it will be even better. I am going to let this dry. Come back just so I can show you the details. And that would be it. Here we go. Here is the page. I hope you can see all the details in the background. I am so satisfied with the outcome. So this is it. Thank you for watching and thank you for leaving me comments below. I'll be seeing you in my next video. Bye for now.